think it is uh, very clear that the country needs reforms. I've made um, also recently a number of statements about what kind of reforms and so on. Uh, I, I think that you, you should, uh, and, and it is, you're right, it's a long time that reform should take place, but it is not because there is a, a purchase of public debt that the reforms are lagging behind. Indeed, uh, you need reforms to increase the rate of growth of the economy. And, uh, and the certain monetary policy cannot increase the rate of growth of the, poly, uh, of the economy. Purchasing debt and to create money is... Uh, uh, useful for level reasons, to increase the level of aggregate demand, reduce the upper gap, uh, raise the possibility of the uh, uh, economy going back to employment that is sufficiently high. But uh, it is not a substitute for measures that uh, increase the rate of growth, the rate of growth of productivity, innovation, uh, and all the uh, improvements that uh, uh, the economy needs now to face the effects of COVID. Governor, what is your opinion on Italy using ESM funds? There are a number of people have been asking that question. Well, I think I gave a testimony in, uh, in Parliament uh, a few months ago before the COVID uh, started. Uh, I, I think that uh, these funds, now it is clear, they come uh, without strings attached. Uh, it is clear that uh, they have to be used for particular reasons. This is the only, the only requirement. So if needed, I don't see any risk to use. But we should not consider that they, this is manna. Uh, this is still a loan. Uh, rather than being a loan in the market, it is a loan uh, with respect to Europe, but it is a loan. Governor, I'm also getting quite a lot of questions on um, PEP and actually the unwinding of, of, you know, some of the special measures. When will this happen? I mean, could, could we see a ECB balance sheet increasing for the next five to ten years? Or how do you see the timeline of this progressing? How long? Well, I would say reinvestment has to go on for some time, uh, certainly the monetary stance has to remain easy for a long time. I mean, we still have projections that it will take years before we go to uh, what we define, define as price stability. Uh, we have to avoid mistakes. We have been able to avoid the deflation, and there were risk of deflation, uh, not only what some uh, of others say, in uh, in uh, between the mid of last uh, of the decade that is ending now uh, and uh, and we have been able really to counter them consistently through also through qe so this is this is a new a new instrument that we have could second tier banks survive with the second round of new non-performing loans well, first, I have to say that uh, the first round of new performing loans has been met in uh, very difficult circumstances because Italy has been tremendously hit by the combination of the global financial crisis and the sovereign debt crisis. Uh, and this, the real economy has suffered a lot, uh, probably has, uh, has fallen by 10 percentage points more or less, which is, by the way, what we are foreseeing more or less for uh, post-COVID. So it is, uh, it is correct to somehow to have this in mind. Uh, and uh, in that case, uh, there, has, there has been a substantial fall in uh, the uh, quality of credit. Uh, but, uh, and a number of banks have from that. At the end, uh, I used to say that the Italian system was... Uh, was uh, solid uh, in uh, its entirety. But obviously there were a number of pieces which were very weak and some of them uh, did not manage really to resist. How much? Less than 10%. 90% of the system has uh, gone through this very difficult period in, 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 in sufficiently well. Now, what about now? Well, uh, clearly we start from a much better position in the banking system than 10 years ago. The capital ratios of banks have doubled. The uh, non-performing loans are more or less back to where they were 